You know, I was I was thinking that like first I was like, you know, you guys must be so relieved. One of the great things about doing this podcast is you can actually just talk about like yourselves and what's going on in your lives and people aren't bringing up a TV show from, you know, decades ago and yeah. everything. And then I was like watching the clips and it was like, yeah, but then you got to talk about your diarrhea. And, you're, yeah. <laughs> and like, which is so much better than talking about Soprano. <laughs> you know? How did you start the podcast? Did you like one of you go like, "Hey, let's just do this," or you, you just got sick and you're like, "I want to do something." So I uh, I reached out to Jamie and I was like, "I'm I was in L.A. I mean, I was in Vegas uh, playing poker and I was sober, so I was just sick of fucking Vegas. I was like, I, I can't be here anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I move to L.A., would you start a podcast with me? And I had the idea to do it with our friend Cassim. And uh, she said yes, and I just was like, okay, I'm doing it. So I got on a, a plane. We started. We're like, I landed on a Thursday. We recorded our first episode the next day. And when we started this podcast, and this that was this was our old podcast called yeah. Pajama Pants. We like I had never met Cassim, so like we sat down <laughs> the three of us at a table. We had not discussed like what's this podcast gonna be, what's the vibe. Like we literally just started talking, the three of us, and we, you know as podcasts do, like slowly found our groove. And how long did we do it for? We did it for, I think like over two years. Yeah. And then uh, Tom Segura and Christina P were like, hey, we love your pod. We want you to do one for us. And I was like, yeah. let's fucking do it. Like sure. I love, I loved your mom's house. And actually the way that we met them was because the people who produced Pajama Pants, our first podcast, produced uh, Tiger Belly, which is Bobby Lee's podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like a whole, you know, thing of the, they got us in there and then we met them and then they just, uh, yeah. And they just, just liked our pot. They just liked it, which was crazy. I mean, like, we're like Tom Segura and Christina P like Pajama Pants. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, it's, it's, they're, they're, they are who they are and they're the best. And then so I had moved to Austin and Tom and Christina live in Austin and moved their YMH studios to Austin as well, which then got robbed to move to Austin. To oh, do so our you podcast. moved? You guys are all in Austin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you? I, I was there recently. I don't love Austin, but I, I probably didn't see enough of it. It's just like the the downtown area near the club just seems kind of desolate at night, and it's a little, it's still like a little zombie-ish, But maybe that's just where I was. That's just where you were. I'd yeah, say. I'm a I'm a guy where I'm like, if I'm not in New York, everywhere's the same. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, so it's what's what's there for me right now? Because, like, I love living in New York. But when I'm if when I was in Vegas, when I was in L.A., when I was in Austin, I'm like, I, I could just make this work. Like, it's fine everywhere. I'm just like, this isn't New York. You know, it's like right. I, New York, the way that you can, like, at any time, walk out the door and get whatever the fuck you need is that's how I grew up. So it's like not having that is a very weird thing to me where, like, it's like. Hey, it's eight o'clock. Are you sure you have everything you need? Because yeah, the fucking worse. Like I remember, there was one day in Austin where it was, I think it was thirty six degrees, and I was walking around in a hoodie. I went to Whole Foods at six p.m. and they were closed. What? In, it's in downtown Austin, yeah. and I was like, what? And there was a security guard there. He's like, yeah, we're closed, man. He's like, it's it's freezing out. I was, it's like, cold? I was like, it's fucking what? six p.m. on a yeah, weekday. Yeah, we lost power because it was. There, there was a freeze <laughs> last year because the city just is not equipped for wow. when it gets that cold. Yeah, and I'm in a hoodie looking yeah. at Whole Foods <laughs> like it's an apocalypse. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, you guys don't understand. Like, what do you mean? But people don't have that thing that people have in New York and other cities where it's like, oh, if I don't show up to work, someone else is going to take my fucking job. Right. right. Like, they're just kind of like, you know, yeah, it'll, uh, we'll just close Whole Foods today. <laughs> yeah. like, but when that right. happens, don't you go like, I fucking miss New York. Like, this this annoys me. Oh, my God. So much. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Just like not being like, how is how are delis not a thing everywhere? Like, how do you not have a mm -hmm. fucking deli? Like, yeah. what do you mean you don't have a deli? I just. I don't understand, but I guess, you know, being raised here, it's just... But then if they do have a deli, they're usually terrible. Yeah, yeah, right? but at least I know oh, I can yeah. get, like, you a don't drink. Even walk in like, yeah. you know what I mean? I could get yeah. liquid to put in my body at, at, yeah. at 10 p.m. We're yeah. like, we're, uh, like, you just go around places where you're like, unless you go to drive to a gas station, you're just like, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah. And do you guys tape once a week? Yep. Yeah, so we tape once a week. Is that why? Did you move there just specifically to tape and to be close to the studio? Well, she already had lived there. She mm -hmm. moved there during COVID, so I guess so her kids could go to school again. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, what's one of the reasons? Yeah, we were just, uh, we were ready to leave L.A., kind of needed a little venture for our family and wanted to try somewhere new. I didn't, I know that I could never get my husband to move to New York, so it was, you know, he's right there. <laughs> I mean, you know, and we have two little kids, so... 
where we we live a little bit outside of the city of Austin. We live in like the hill country and it's just, you know, it's a simple life, but I really love it. Um, It's still creative and cool. And we have a group of friends that actually moved from LA around the same time. So we kind of had a community there already, but you know, Austin's a cool, it's a cool city. It's a, it's lake life is fun. I've never knew what that was like. You know, there's definitely a lot of things to experience that I've never experienced before as being somebody that grew up in New York. And it's close enough to New York that now we visit a lot more than when we lived in LA. Yeah, oh, it's, sure. it's not. And so many people during the pandemic just moved. Cause it was just such a weird time. Yeah. Like you were just kind of floating in this weird thing. Like it's never going to be normal again. <laughs> And once things started to get normal again, a lot of people regretted their moves. Like a really? lot of people, yeah, I think people were like, I'm going to move to Florida or I'm going to move to Georgia. And then they're like, what the fuck am I doing here? But you have to, <laughs> yeah. but there you are, like it. There are other yeah. people, though, that like moved out of New York during the pandemic that never would have moved. That's true. They never would have left. Yes. And then they get out of New York and they're like, oh my God, this is way better. Like this rules. I never would have gotten space i never would have been mm-hmm. able to breathe air i never especially would people with kids this. yeah yeah you know? hell yeah yeah our kids are thriving there they like know? it oh yeah we have two little boys that are obsessed with sports and texas sports are our life yes yeah <laughs> how far from the border are you guys it's far far i'm terrible with texas <laughs> oh, okay. geography uh i like we're far Far. I, yeah, we're, far. We, we, far. yeah. Like you can't we see can't it. see it from yeah. my. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, no. I would ask that. Hey, no what's the really state bird? Yeah. 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 You have the address. What's your biggest export? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tremendously stupid question. I've just been reading about Texas and the situation they're having. Oh, okay. I was just kind of curious. Yeah. Dude, Dude, I love it politically. I Honestly, love that. I feel like in Austin, because because of sports, we travel with our son to different places within Texas. And whenever I leave Austin, I'm like, oh, this is Texas. Where right. we live is not Texas. Right. Yeah. We're, does it say we're four hours from the border on there? Okay. okay. Yeah. That's that's a lot of walking. Yeah. When, <laughs> when you're in Texas, though, you really don't know where you are. Like, it's such a massive state, and I've kind of played everywhere there. And you have no idea. Like, am I right above Juarez? Am I close to the. Right. You have no idea where no. you are. Yeah. 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 You yeah, look thought, it up on Google. Now we know. I thought, I, the first thing, <laughs> working. I thought the first thing you were going to bring up to me was about how I was in your book. Oh, you were in my book. That's you remember that? Yes, when you came to the HBO taping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how dumb I am. I, 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 I read it, and I thought of that this morning, but I forgot that I had put it in the book because I like, like, you know how you like you don't watch your. I don't watch myself, and I will not reread it. I read it probably yeah. back in two thousand seven, eight, and I just haven't looked. I would love though, like walking down the street and seeing you reading your own book. Yeah. yeah. Like the weirdest, yeah. most like, egotistical. Especially if I got hit by a truck. <laughs> How great would that be? What was he doing? Not Why? laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I introduced you. You came to, I was taping Down and Dirty. It was That was that four episode thing I did for HBO where I hosted and there was a lot of great comics came from that. Jeselnik and Whitney. Oh, yeah. Jeselnik um, crushed. He was great. Oh. Was that the episode? How many episodes yeah, did you yeah, see? Yeah. Was I, it two? I, so I did uh, Jeselnik, Artie Lang, and then I forget who else was on, but Jesselnik took the, I mean, he just fucking killed. Yeah, he was great. And we had, we had like a kind of like a headline act on each one. Artie was one of them. Uh, Bill was one. Dice was one. And Patrice, I think, was the fourth. Um, and I introduced you because I was like, I want to introduce Robert. But I pronounced your name wrong. Instead of Eiler, I said Robert Ilier. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, which wow. isn't bad, but then they made no, him come out they and made do it me again. redo it. Oh. That's what was, because, because nobody in the audience knows nobody who I am. They cared. don't know that my name was wrong. They don't know anything. But then, like, there was this weird thing where it was like almost like a fire drill where like he came out and was like, oh, everyone, if you could please, like, yeah, I, I, HBO wants me to redo this thing. And I don't know. It's about me. Like, I'm like, oh, what, what happened? Like, you know, right. and then this is but this is why I'm this is why my showbiz instincts are just non-existent <laughs> and I'm dumb. I should have said there was a technical issue and then redone it. But I didn't. Well, I you just... could never. Like your honesty yeah, is too. Yeah, I was too... gonna say you're an honest guy. I know, like right. too, like a fault. I just came out. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Not... I, I fucked up. I fucked up. I gotta do it again. That was kind of it. Yeah, I'm like, look, I made a mistake. You know, I'm honest <laughs> everywhere except relationships. Oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we all can't. We can't be perfect. Yeah, you're yeah. very cool about it, though. But I remember, is that what I wrote in the book? You were great. Yeah. Well, I just I felt bad because I knew the feel. Like I know how you were feeling, and I'm like, oh my god. God, this sucks. And I was like, I'm so happy I'm not 
really famous and important because you, you would have killed yourself. Like, because you felt so bad and it was just me. Like, I, I can't imagine if it was like, you know. Well, I was happy. You were, I knew you were coming. They told us you were coming. And I was like, oh, this is fucking great. And it was my idea to introduce you. I'm like, I want, I want to. So how did somebody, did somebody like, when you get backstage, did somebody go like, what What did you call I don't him? remember why I did it because it's been, it's been a long time. But I don't remember if somebody said the name to me wrong. I just I just don't remember if I thought that or if somebody goes, no, his name is wrong. And then I just said it like that. Or if I, I probably just panicked in the moment like a fucking blinking idiot. And well, it was the only up. place where everyone actually knew my name, you know? It, were, it was a fucking HBO right. film. Yeah. So they're, like, they're in the back like, ah, oh, his name, you know, we know he got his name wrong. Yeah, you know? the gaffer screamed at me. Yeah, was, everybody knew. Yeah, that was taped in, uh, what was that, in Edgewood, uh, New Jersey or something? It was or Maybe Edgewood. I forget where. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe Edgewood, yeah. And I don't get many celebrities at my events, so I was very happy you came. Really? Yeah, 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 very, yeah. very rarely. Yeah. <laughs> very rarely does anybody show up. They say they're going to show up, and they never do. No. Dude, Jess only fucking mur- I remember, like, because I, I, I don't think I had ever been to a comedy club before going to that show. I remember seeing oh, Jess wow. and I could be in like, oh, cause the, so, like, the only comedy I'd ever, you know, besides, like, on fucking CDs back then or whatever, but, like, that, I was like, holy shit, this guy just fucking yeah. lit this place up. Like, he, and he was he had that cadence of just like, he was who he was from the beginning of just not giving a fuck. Yeah, he's a murderer. I mean, he's just like, you know, set up and, punch, and, and it's always brutal and it's always funny and you don't see it coming. He's great. Just yeah. like he's great. And there's he, also no flapping him, right? Like no. even if somebody goes like, ooh, it's like his face remains exactly the same. He's unfazed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like you're the. He almost has like this weird thing. Like South Park has pulled this off too, where you're the idiot if you get upset. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah do you know yeah. what I mean? Like yes. you can get upset if you want, but it's like you know what he does, and if that bothers you, well then don't come. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys go to Joe's Club? Uh, do you go to the Comedy Mothership? Uh, no, we've been talking about it because I. That's the one thing I haven't done since moving to Austin is get into the comedy scene. Um. But I really want to. We're, I mean, my, we're always trying to line it up whenever Tom and Christina are performing, but I would like to go to the mothership. For it's sure. always been like either you can or I can or yeah. they can. or So we were going to go see Christina on a Thursday. I think she does every Thursday yeah. at the mothership, and we we're going to go see her. And then uh, she. I didn't think she was doing today, and we're here. So yeah. yeah. And she left town. And then, uh, yeah, when we had Tom, Tom was on our show last week, and he was like, oh, you went next week? And we're like, oh, we're going to New yeah, York. Yeah, but it's cool. When Tom was on the show, he's like, I don't know, I might go in tonight. And we, like, I was like, that's so dope. Like, you could just decide, like, <laughs> yeah, ah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go perform tonight. Yeah. Just show up. Yeah. Uh, they have a nice, I did, uh, there was a podcast, what was it, Laura Compton's podcast? First date. Yeah, it was great. She's a great host. Yeah. And they have, like, a complex. They have, like, a, yeah. a giant warehouse filled with, uh, yeah. they did compound. it right. A compound, yeah. It's fucking crazy like yeah. you go there and you're like wow it's really this set is... up nice it's a good vibe when you go in there yeah and christina says it's like the the house that farts built you know she's <laughs> like it's just crazy that you come in here and you see this place and you're like oh there's something re-. like it's like when we filmed sopranos at silver cup like yeah. you're like this is a fucking legit studio there's people moving shit in and out changing sets this yeah. and you're like wow this is a fucking... yeah they send us like a call sheet yeah for yeah our, when we record and they're like crew set up the you know that's Jamie awesome. and rob arrived this time it's so official I yeah. love that. And this. then we get there and we're talking about diarrhea. diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. Diarrhea. Who had it's diarrhea, important. by the way? You didn't specify. I don't know. Well, I think I think people. Well, we you talk had a, poop. We talk about poop. We talk a lot. poop. And then yeah. your UTI was a big. Uh, so uh, so this is the thing. It's like Rob just like doesn't let me get like away with anything. Where I was like, I'm sorry, I gotta go pee again. And he was like, and so when I sat down, he's like, okay, why are you having to keep going to pee? And like, it's he's a just thirty like, minute pot. <laughs> he, won't me, he won't let me get away with it. So I had mentioned that I had, I can't believe this is going to continue. So I had mentioned that I was like suffering at the moment from a UTI. And then I showed up the next week and Rob had all of his celebrity friends create uh, like a in memoriam type <laughs> video for me, a sympathy video That's to great. some beautiful music. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was epic. Were you like uh, a big comedy podcast fan? Is that what got it into your head that we should just do this? Yeah, I mean, I I loved Stern back in the day, like the Artie years. I yeah. fucking loved. Yeah, uh, and then I got really into uh, Your Mom's House and Tiger Belly. Yeah, I just like the big be- the beginning of Tiger Belly when Bobby Lee just like didn't understand fully <laughs> that this was going out to the world. Yes. <laughs> the shit that uh. I mean, and on on the when he used to come into it was this when he used to come in and tell his stories and his Opie fucking, and Anthony, yeah. yeah. Opie and Anthony, Holy shit, man! He is just a fucking national treasure. Yeah, like he to me, there's nobody more entertaining. He's hilarious to watch, and he's so one of my you know 
Sopranos isn't like an anime, so he's never seen it. You know, he has no clue who <laughs> I am. So he, uh, we we went to film the um, your mom's house does live shows sometimes. So he goes, um, and I had just gotten hired by them, and he they're filming stuff like in, in the pre show or whatever. And he lo- and he has no idea who I am. He looks at me and he goes, "I want to get I want to get naked and walk by." And I go, "Oh, I go okay, go ahead." And he goes, well, no, I want to make sure it's okay with Tom and Christine. I go, I work here. It's fine. Like, you know, it's okay. I've never heard so fast a belt buckle hit a floor. He didn't That's unbutton his to. pants. He, did, he just wiggled. And his fucking pants hit the floor. He put his hand over his cock. And he walked to where they were filming and just destroyed the entire fucking thing that they were doing that they had planned for, like, months. You know what I mean? And he's just walking around like he doesn't know where he is. <laughs> Butt naked, and I'm like, this guy is so fucking. He's incredible. raw and funny, yeah. He's just yeah. so good, man. And you guys did this his show? No, no, no. never. But he, uh, we had yeah, the same producers as him. Yeah, he just he he thought that I was a guy who just like you know it was like a you know yeah. set building sets at YMH. But then you know? all you had to say was I work here. And he's yeah, like, oh, yeah. Okay, I'll take yeah. A yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, it was like, what else would I be doing there? You know, there's only like ten people there. He's like, well, how else would I get in the door? You know, and they have like you know fucking you're not just walking in the door. So right. like, he's like, I'm like, yeah, I work here. He's like, okay, bang. So you're the same producers. He's in he's in L. A. Right. Yeah, he's in L.A., and we were doing uh, – so the reason we stopped doing our podcast was because uh, when she moved to Austin, we started over Zoom, and Zoom is death. Uh, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, Zoom it is just fucking yeah. terrible. Well, I mean, know? at first it started in COVID, obviously. Right, right, we right. Yeah, yeah. M- many episodes, mm-hmm. um, and then it just continued. And, yeah, I mean, it was just it was just hard to keep the rhythm, and yeah. we did we did our best, and we had we had such a loyal – group of listeners to pajama yeah. pants they were small and mighty and like anytime i would meet somebody that listened i was like oh you get me like you know me you know what i mean that just felt like i felt like such a kinship with them so jamie it's... ordered chairs one time online and they didn't show up on time and people were ready to like oh, go yeah, to I london thought i got scammed <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought i got like my identity stolen and people were like yeah people w- were ready to go to bat for me yeah well that's yeah i mean podcasts are like so intimate that now people feel like they know you yeah like the fact that people would come up to you with soprano stuff that you're like i really have no idea what you're talking about because i don't watch a show like have you gotten to the point yet where people are coming up to you talking about your real life and you're like i forgot that we yes. talked about this i don't know what you're yes. saying yes yeah yes. it's weird sure. right yes i know people know like what i they're like oh did you eat chicken again today you know because i just like i'm like yeah, i just eat chicken every i eat once a day and i just eat chicken every day and people are like oh did you eat yeah yeah and like have you know it's weird <laughs> yeah it's, it is a weird thing because you're like yeah but i don't know you to have this conversation with right because when people right, used to but... say shit it was like you know something about tony this and i'm like i don't know what that is. where now it's like oh yeah no i haven't eaten yeah i'm actually kind of hungry you know yeah. like, it's like it's weird and when you're sitting across from somebody that you are very close with and have like a genuine relationship with and so when him and i talk even though we're like i'm aware that we're on a set and there's cameras and we have our booth boys and you know we're talking but like i'm still talking to rob so it can't help but get personal yeah Yeah. right because you're so comfortable yeah if you were on like a press tour or something or doing interviews on a show or you were on this show and we were like tell us about your uti you'd be like the fuck are you? What is this show? You know, about? I've been broken down so hard at this point, though. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Okay. There's such a great, and that's what's so great about like, like you know, because they do Doctor Drew's show and other people where like they face the cameras and they face the booth boys, so it's like very. You're reminded. It's like being a news anchor. You're reminded yeah. that there's a production where I asked them. I was like, "Can we face each other? Yeah. So that you can completely forget and the safety of knowing." hey, this doesn't come out for a few days, so if you decide a day or two later that you want to edit it, we don't have to have that angst of like, should I say this, should I not? It's like, say whatever the fuck you want. Right. And then if tomorrow you want that out, it's no problem. Like, it's so much better to be comfortable We could not have done this podcast, though, when I was in my 20s and early 30s where, like, I cared more. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you're catching me right now at a time where my kids, I finally got to this stage of, like, parenthood where I'm, like, can breathe a little bit. I'm, like, a little exhausted, a little relieved, and just care a whole lot less. Yeah, and it's probably, like, that's when, like, you're going to do your best stuff and you're going to be happiest and you're going to be like, I really should have stopped caring a long yes, time ago. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I also just, I always knew, like, I'm not an actor. You know what I mean? Like, I knew it wasn't fit. Like, when I did Sopranos, I was like, I love this. And so I thought I loved acting. And then when I tried to do acting after it, I was like, oh, this isn't that. Like, this, and that's yeah. what everybody on Sopranos said. Like, they had been acting for 
10, 20, mm-hmm. 30 years. So they were like, you don't know how lucky you are. And I was 12. I was like, oh, everyone doesn't get on a hit show. Like, yeah, right away, you know, so I, I really didn't know. And then afterwards you go and you do stuff and like people stay in their campers and then they show up and they do their lines and they go back. And this is where we were like, we were waiting for them to yell cut so we could like all sit at the bar together and talk and laugh and do stupid shit. And it was just, you know, we couldn't wait. Like nobody wanted to go to the Emmys, but everybody wanted to hang out. And, and you know, it was like, oh, who's on my flight? And you'd get so excited by like, who's on my flight? Because I don't get to do scenes with this person, but now we're going to be on the same flight yeah. for six hours. Yeah. Right.